Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going? Aaron Hilliard, Mushroom Wonderland, taking a forage through the woods again, like I do, and uh, looking at some new mushrooms today. Ooh, there's a pretty one. Look at that. Going right here in the middle of the corner for forest. Oh, look at that. Perfect specimen. Boom. Amanita muscaria. Variety. Flavi vulvata. And you see with these spots where the white spots are missing. And that is uh, probably from rain. Uh, we can just wash them off. Sometimes they'll just look plain red. And uh, be a little confusing. But if you look at that vulva on the bottom. Unmistakable. Oh, and look right there. There's his friend. So, uh, we're pretty deep out here in the woods. Often you can find these growing right in the city, but they definitely can be found out in the woods. And, uh, all kinds of mysteries and cool stuff about these mushrooms. And, um, they're considered toxic by every field guide you'll ever get, but there is a way to process it where it's edible. And ancient peoples would, uh, derive the muscimol out of this and use it as a type of hallucinogenic of types of sorts they would uh there's also a way to process this where it becomes a type of psychoactive mushroom which i'm not interested in but uh, always a beautiful one very iconic toadstool mario mushroom amanita muscaria so remember that one everybody knows these mushrooms I look right here in the bushes, I think I see what's another type of Amanita. This one is not, oh, they're pretty gross, pretty hammered. But see that guy there, all this modeling on the cap. There is no veil left, but there was one on here and it fell off. It's been munched on by bugs. But this one is another one of the more toxic mushrooms growing here in the PNW, the Amanita smithiana. So uh, sometimes people confuse these for Matsutake mushrooms, but this one is an Amanita. You can tell by that bulbous base. And it's got this kind of um, spots and stuff on the cap and uh, just kind of the shaggy stem. And the Amanita smithiana contains enough toxins that if you ate enough of these you could die so be sure to avoid that and not mistake that for a matsutake um, one of the northwest's more poisonous mushrooms so i'm walking along come across see this little orange guy right down here and I got a feeling this is a mushroom I'm familiar with. Let's take a look at this. And, uh, yeah, if you look underneath here, what we got is a little bit of a, a little bit of green staining going on. So let me, uh, let me get my pocket knife out and show you something real quick. So, yeah, we got this little orange mushroom. And, uh, this one, if you look, it doesn't have that orange color spore print, so not a quaternarius. Um, and I guarantee if I br try to break the stem, it's not going to break like a russula. But one way to identify this kind of mushroom, well, you can see that green down there in the gills. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just give this a little cut. And then watch what happens to where I cut. Lots of bugs on this one. You, So, that right away would kind of make me want to avoid this. But, um, this guy with that green staining and then it's got this kind of red bruising. Uh, this is an indicator. Uh, well, first of all, it's a lactarius. And you'll start to see this little milk coming out of it. And it lactates and this one because of that green staining under the gills um, I think falls in the lactarius deliciosus group which uh, 
yes, deliciosus as in edible. So you can eat this mushroom, even though uh, this one's just totally covered in bugs, so I would avoid that. And then uh, they just kind of have a weird texture that's kind of crunchy. And, uh, and I would probably, I don't know, it just kind of turns me off. And a lot of people just aren't all that into them. But we got that green kind of color on the gills. We got this red bruising. And, uh, yeah, this kind of depressed orange cap. It's got this kind of orange peel texture on it. And uh, also this kind of orange frosty colored uh, stipe on here. So Lactarius Deliciosus. If you care to eat some of these, I would just... Try to not get one with all of those little bugs living in the gills. It's kind of nasty. I mean, all mushrooms probably have bugs on them, but not that buggy. So we're gonna we're gonna just put that back. It can do its thing. And I just did it a favor because I just released a ton of spores right there. So uh, my dog's gonna get some on his paws, and he's gonna carry spores through the forest. So we're doing a service to that mushroom by picking it. So there you go. You can find pretty big Lactarius deliciosus. Um, I personally don't find them that deliciosus. So, but you can. You can eat them. So this one does appear to have some kind of a cortina, but look, if you remember in the uh, recent Matsutake video, uh, this ashy gray kind of soil on the bottom of the stipe of the uh, Matsutake. Uh, same thing going on here. Also the same tapered stem, the same kind of um, scaly looking uh, tapered stipe, and then it's got this real strong veil that attaches the cap to the stalk and uh, that's a uh, those are all pretty good keys to help you identify a mushroom and so this looks a bit like a matsutake but it's a uh, very orange on top um, so it is actually related to the matsutake it's in the same genus tricholoma and this one is called and this one is called tricholoma focali and this one uh Aside from being bitter and unpalatable, it can mess your stomach up a little bit. But uh, this is uh, closely related to the Matsutake. Right here you have Tricholoma focali. Pretty mushroom. More Tricholoma focali. And uh, you can see it kind of looks, it kind of grows like a Matsutake too. The way it's pushing out of this moss like this. Look at that, man. It's got the stipe of a of a matsutake, same kind of white gills, but that's not what this is. But it is a good sign that there's probably matsutake growing in the same area. So if you're finding the focali, that gray ashy soil on the base, tapered stipe, scaly stipe, uh, kind of rusty brown color, all the, all the indicators are here of a tricholoma. So if you're finding these, you just might find matsutake. down here you got kind of a cool combination of mushrooms growing right next to each other and uh, one of them is edible and one of them is not uh, do you know which one is which I'll give you a hint this one's called a honey mushroom and that one's called a sulfur tuft so which one do you think you'd rather eat yeah the honey mushroom so look this is a this is what a young honey mushroom armillaria mella looks like it's all uh, enclosed and look it's got all this like kind of fibrous hair on it you can see the veil is all nice and closed and it's got this really kind of stringy stipe on it um, that's indicative of armillaria and so the, these uh, I think they're really delicious some people have gastric upset from these but uh, I find them quite delicious 
So these are your armillaria or your honey mushrooms. And then growing right next to those, we have what are known as Hyphaloma fasciculari, or the sulfur tuft. Talked about these a lot in videos this year. Um, these are a poisonous mushroom. You got these dark spores. You can really kind of start to see them as I turn the mushroom. And uh, yeah, these are a, one of the more toxic native species here in the Northwest. And so um, don't eat these ones. But they do glow really cool in black light and ultraviolet light. They really, they really are fluorescent. But uh, these ones are pretty decent edibles. Try just a few at first uh, to make sure they don't upset your stomach. I didn't have any problem with them and I can't seem to eat chanterelles. So these are a good edible for me. Honey mushrooms and sulfur tuft. Always growing at the bottom of a stump. Both of these, they like growing at the bottom of a stump. Came across here. These big, huge guys. They're monstrous. What do we have here? Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see if we can get underneath it. Whoa! Look at these bluets. So this is a wood bluet, Lapista nuda, or Cletoside nuda. And uh, some people really like to eat these. They they have. Oops, these have kind of a kind of an orange juice smell. I can definitely smell it. But uh, these are some of the bigger ones I've ever seen of these wood bluets, so. Cool. In fact, I don't really even smell any smell with this. But I can tell it's got this kind of brown colored cap. I thought they were, uh, I thought they were Boletus edulis for a second, but uh, I'm a little bit surprised to see this purple underneath, this violet color, so. That's a pretty one, and let me pick this big, huge one. Show you a big bluet. You don't usually find bluets quite that big. <laughs> Look at that guy. That thing is massive. So uh, let me flip that camera around again, and we'll take a better look at this big, mature bluet. Boom, there you go. Look at that guy. Huge bluet. Big Cletocybe nuda, Lepista nuda, and uh, this thing's letting go of a lot of spores right now, so pretty neat. Gonna take these in the bag. And yes, I plucked the whole base, it helps to be able to identify these. So, yeah, those are those are beauties, those are huge. Look at my foot next to them, we're a ten and a half, so. Pretty big bluets going in our basket bag. Coming down the trail, I just about missed these. They just blend in with the dirt and the needle duff so well. And look at these like really woolly caps on them. And uh, when I pick one of these, this one's going to have teeth underneath it. Look at that. It's not gills. It's actually teeth. And this is uh, known as the uh, Sarcodon imbractus. The Sarcodon imbractus. So this mushroom is known as the Sarcodon imbractus. This one is also called the scaly hedgehog. It's got these teeth, but it's, uh, it's very bitter. And uh, you can see why it's called the woolly or the scaly hedgehog very woolly and scaly looking so uh this one's pretty interesting with those teeth underneath that's what a hedgehog or a hydenum looks like well this isn't the same genus as the hedgehog this one is the sarcodon so uh, kind of an interesting one i've heard people call them the northwest hawk's wing um, but uh, I just know it as the Sarcodon and Bractus. So there you go, growing in a big old cluster like that. <laughs> so 
So here I came across some really beautiful mushrooms. These ones are a photographer's delight. Maybe not so much culinarily. I don't really know the edibility of these because they're usually not found in huge numbers. But uh, I do find some from time to time. And they're mycorrhizal, so they grow in the same place every year. Uh, or they should. And, um, and uh, so this has got a very, very fuzzy cap. And uh, these are in the web cap family, so another Cortinarius. This is uh, known as Cortinarius violaceus. So let's have a look at the underneath the, one of these. Oh, pretty. Look how dark this is. It's an amazing looking mushroom. So it too has got this orange brown spore print, like all other Cortinarius mushrooms. That's what puts it in that family. But look how vibrant that purple is. So. Beautiful, beautiful mushrooms. Um, always fun to find and uh, and to look at. So, yeah, there's your Cortinarius violaceus. Very furry. Hey, so thanks for coming along on another forage. Uh, we're getting pretty late in the season here, so, you know, we're scrounging for mushrooms to ID, and uh, then some really cool videos are gonna start coming out once we get through all these foraging videos. And uh, hopefully the content continues to get a little bit better. I know the camera work can be pretty shaky. The audio can be a little bit touchy. I'm sort of still learning to make good quality videos, uh, but, and I'm also learning more mushrooms out here so thanks for watching mushroom wonderland and uh hope to see you on the next video